Our headlines this hour, federal government discontinues treason case against Omoyele Sore. The Police Service Commission shortlists 171,956 applicants for computer-based test. Plus, Indonesia's Prabowo Subianto set for sweeping presidential win. Hello and a very warm welcome. This is News Live on Viewer Television. I am Chinon Su Chekwes. And we'll begin the news tonight with one of our top stories as the federal government has declared its intention to discontinue the treasonable felony case instituted against the publisher of Sahara Reporters, Omoyele Sore. The development was made known in a document by the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Latif Fagwemi. The document, dated February 15th of 2024, was addressed to the Federal High Court of Nigeria, Abuja Division. And in the document, the government disclosed its intention to also discontinue the case against Soares' co-defendant, Olawale Bakari, a.k.a. Mandate. Meanwhile, the trial judge, Justice Emeka Nwite, of the Federal High Court, sitting in Abuja, had on Wednesday, February 14th, threatened to strike out the over four-year long treasonable felony case. And also the House of Representatives has urged the Chief Judge of the Federal High Court in Abuja to immediately halt the recruitment process until there is compliance with the federal character principle and quota system. And this was the resolution of a motion on their matters of urgent national importance moved by Honorable Igiriwe Onu from Ebony State at Plenary. The lawmaker is concerned over the non-representation of judges from four states in the high court system of the FCT when some others have as many as three judges representing them. He added that it is a gross violation of Section 14, Subsection 3 of the 1999 Constitution, which requires staffing from the 36 states, including the FCT. Four states, namely Ebony, Abia, Imo, and Bayelsa, do not have a single indigent from their states appointed and sitting in the FCT High Court system. Worried that Ebony State, in particular, is doubly discriminated against in that it has none of its judges appointed in the high courts of the FCT and yet was not listed as one of the states to apply for the vacant 12 positions sought to be filled. Further aware that according to the FCT website, at least seven magistrates from the four unrepresented states of Ebony, Abia, Imo, and Bayelsa are currently qualified and working in the FCT court system as magistrates in addition to qualified private legal practitioners from these states who are willing and eager to apply to, have, to fill these vacant positions. Concerned that the non-representation of judges from these four states in the high court system of the FCT, when some others have as many as three judges representing them, is a gross violation of Section 14.3 of the 1999 Constitution, which requires staffing from the 36 states and the FCT. Cognizant of the fact that the underlying philosophy of the Federal Character Commission principle is to provide the quality of access in public service representations, Honorable curb dominance by one or few sections of the country, promote inclusiveness and national unity. However, Speaker Abbas Tajudid, who ruled over the matter, directed the relevant committees to seek further legislative approach on the matter and report to the House for further actions. And the House of Representatives again has urged the Federal Ministry of Health and its regulatory authorities to take immediate and decisive action to address the issues of hospitals and healthcare facilities refusing to treat accidents or gunshot patients without a police officer's report. The House also urged the Federal Ministry of Health to enforce regulations 
prohibiting hospitals from denying or delaying emergency medical care to victims of accidents or gunshot wounds without a police report and impose appropriate sanctions and penalties. This was a resolution of motion moved by Honorable Odia Nesson Okoji from Delta State. The lawmaker expressed worry that the refusal of hospitals to treat patients without a police report is a direct violation of the principles of medical ethics, professional conduct, and the universal right of individuals to access health care. The provision of Section 1 of the compulsory treatment and care for victims of gunshot Act 2017 provides that every hospital is to receive and treat victims of gunshot wound with or without police clearance and or payment or any initial deposit, but are duty bound to report to the nearest police station within hours of commencement treatment on the victims. The House also note that the Section 7 of the Act state that any authority or persons whose omission results in the unnecessary death of a gunshot victim shall be liable to imprisonment for five years or fine in the sum of 500,000. And still in the Green Chamber, the House of Representatives has stepped down a bill seeking to change the minimum requirement for the Office of President, Vice, and National Assembly members and other political officers from first school leaving certificates to degree or its equivalent. Now, this followed the introduction of a bill moved by Honorable Adewumi or Nanuga during plenary to change the educational qualification for elections into certain political offices and for related matters. And now here's the report. The minimum requirement for the Office of President, Vice President and National Assembly members in Nigeria are aligned in the 1999 Constitution. The educational qualification for the Office of a National Assembly member in Nigeria is at least the school certificate level or its equivalent. On the floor of the House of Bills to alter the 1999 Constitution concerning educational qualification was introduced. And they even go and do the mandatory one-year service of NYSC. And they cannot get jobs or even appointments in the, in the, in the, um, in, the uh, in Nigeria, in any offices or in any uh, agency or department or ministry without having served their country. And they would have gone to at least a university or its equivalent and have that qualification with them. But then if you're going to be a member of a state house of assembly, a councillor, a member house of representative, a senator, a president, a governor, all you need is a high, a high school certificate to qualify to be in that position. Are we therefore saying that our children have no reason to go to university or to get any education in that, in that equivalent? So this bill, sir, seeks to make sure that everybody is brought to par, especially those who will be directing the affairs of this country. Speaking in favor of the bill, some lawmakers noted the declining standard of education, stating that raising educational requirements will motivate Nigerian youth. They emphasized the importance of backing this effort wholeheartedly. We Nigerians, we always see leaders of other nations talking, adumbrating, articulating issues, engaging the public and engaging their opponents and we are proud of them. Then we have some here that are dodging debates. Presidential debates, they won't come. Give press conference, they won't go because they are afraid to face the public with unanticipated or unprepared questions. Let us stop deceiving ourselves. I do not believe that this should apply to all categories of elections. At the local government, you don't need a university. You need to know your local government, your people, where the streams are, where the bad boys are. But if you are going to be a president or vice president, or you are going to be a governor or deputy governor of this country, you must have a university. For those who had primary school certificates in 1966, the quality of education they had then, positions they occupied then, is equivalent to position of managing directors who have uh, uh, degrees today. They could read and write fluently. In fact, teachers were drawn from even primary six holders. They were teachers in classrooms. They were directors in ministries. Do we continue in that step today? The visa to prosperity, three things. 
education, education, education. I cannot believe that in this modern age, some people would oppose and say, no, no education. Don't go to school. Don't go to school and be the president of Nigeria. Nearly all of us have been to establish higher institution in his or her domain. And the reason is to get your people educated. So why do we want to stay behind? If we can do this, we should be able to support this bill to get our people to go to school. Whoever is going to hold position in Nigeria to have knowledge and know why is in the office. The lawmakers who spoke against the bill said the leadership quality of a political office holder is not determined by their level of education. They said passing the bill into second reading will negatively affect some sections of the country, insisting that educational qualification was not a true taste of knowledge. Mr. Speaker, we have Nigerians with various qualifications who have committed all kinds of crimes. If we are talking of educational qualification, when you say this is a professor, that is the end of it. But with this INEC issue, what we saw the professors doing, I think it's better you go and carry a laborer and ask him to be the chairman of a final. We are doing laws for good governance and peace of this country. Mr. Speaker, whether we like it or not, we are not going to make legislations that only favor few Nigerians. How many Nigerians are degree holders? Substantial number of Nigerians are less than degree holders. And now you are saying only a degree holder can be enfranchised. And we end up disenfranchising more than 90% of our population. Are we fair to our people? So the most important thing is we should understand that Nigeria still is an infant as far as democracy is concerned. The bill was therefore stepped down after a heated debate by the presiding officer, Honorable Benjamin Kalo. Let me highlight that issues bordering on constitutional amendments, you don't do the amendment on the floor. It goes to the committee level. I've noticed that most of you wanted to make amendment to this particular piece of legislation to suit what you may consider as being um, the right thing to do. But that can only happen at the uh, committee level. So, um, so the next thing is to vote on it. It expected that very soon the House will call for a memoranda from the public to contribute to the debate on either to leave the Constitution or alter it as it concerns educational qualifications for elections in certain political offices. And the Federal Ministry of Works have been urged by the House of Representatives to prioritize and ensure that adequate budgetary provision is made in the 2025 budget estimates to comprehensively address the completion of the abandoned Ayile Ayede Efiri Road in Ogun Waterside. The motion sponsored by Honorable Joseph Adegbeson observed that the projects were initially designed to improve the living conditions of Nigerians in terms of the construction of roads and bridges, electrification and power improvement, the provision of water, education and health facilities. The lawmaker observed that successive administrations have neglected these projects because of the assumption that they were not initiated by their government or did not fall within their policy direction. Honorable Adegbeson called on the contractors involved to return to the field and complete the project and reports to the House within four weeks for further legislative action. Climbing and negatively impacting the country's infrastructural development. Also know that this menace is preventing Nigeria from receiving benefit from the proceeds of their taxes and national resources. Taxes and national resources. Those statistics show that currently over 56 projects worth over 12 trillion naira are abandoned at different locations in the country. 
Time now for a quick break. When News Live returns, the Borno State Government says it will deliver its overall objectives, which is ensuring food security, completion of projects, and economic development. Details of this and more comes to you right after the break. Gentlemen, <laughs> I'm at the Envoy Hotel Diplomatic Drive 305 here for a business weekend. It's been an amazing stay. Conference hall and business facilities here are stylish and innovative. The Envoy Hotel is luxury, esoteric opulence for ultimate comfort. Welcome back. This is still News Live on Viewer Television. And now let's give you a recap of our top stories. Federal government discontinues treason case against Omoyele Sore. And the Police Service Commission shortlists 171,956 applicants for computer based tests. Plus, Indonesia's Prabowo Subianto set for sweeping presidential win. And about 34,311 trillion naira revenue was generated 
through the Remitter platform into the Federation accounts between 2015 and 2022. The managing director of Remita, Deremi Atondi, disclosed this during the investigative hearing on alleged revenue leakages through Remitter platform and non-compliance substantively with standard operating procedure and other allied service agreements held at the instance of the House Committee on Public Accounts, chaired by Honorable Bamidili Salam. The chairman, Honorable Bamidili Salam, in his investigation, sought to understand the activities of of the remitter if it cannot be easily manipulated or impose additional fees on users. Is it possible that um, an agency that is supposed to charge 1,000 Naira for a service gives the payer a lower charge to come and pay? Does remitter have a way of recognizing that no, if you are paying for maybe uh, a particular service with the FCT, uh, you're supposed to pay 25,000 Naira, and then an official there says, oh, go and pay 19,000 Naira. Is there anything on the platform that prevents this kind of uh, underhand dealing? And while dismissing insinuation that Remita imposed additional fee, apart from the approved 150 Naira, on the revenue generating MDAs, Atonde disclosed that the Remitter Payment Gateway platform provides additional technology services to the Federation at no cost, despite paying foreign exchange for hosting the platform on cloud based platforms. Having been in the picture for this number of years, we think that there can be increased public sensitization and enlightenment in respect of revenue collections so that citizens are not misled to pay government revenues into accounts that may not belong to government. We think it will also be helpful for citizens to be informed about the channels of convenience, which includes agents everywhere to make payments to government. The House of Representatives has urged the Executive Secretary of the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities to revive compliance activities of the Commission and to look into the affected grey areas and actively operationalize the working framework of the Act. The House further urged the Federal Ministry of Health and the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and poverty alleviation to provide and make available relief materials, equipment to aid free mobility of persons with disabilities across the Federation. In a motion sponsored by Honorable Ibrahim Mohammed, the House noted that the Discrimination Against People Persons Living with Disabilities Act 2018 was established to fully integrate persons with disabilities into society and establishes the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities vest the commission with power to ensure their education, health, care, social, economic and civil rights. the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities to revive compliance activities of the Commission, look into the affected grey areas and actively operationalize the working framework of the Act accordingly. Two, urge the Federal Ministry of Health and Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Elevation to provide and make available relief materials, equipment to aid free mobility of persons with disabilities across the Federation. Three, further urge the Commission to encourage constant advocacy and outreach to enlighten legislators and other decision makers on issues affecting persons with disabilities. its committee on disability and safety standards specialty healthcare, human rights and emergency and disaster preparedness to ensure compliance the police service commission psc has shortlisted 
171,956 candidates for computer-based test CBT in the ongoing recruitment process for applicants seeking employment into Constable Kader of the Nigeria Police. According to a statement in Abuja by the head of press and public relations of PSC, Ike Chuku Ani, the CBT will hold on March 5th, and Ani says the candidates for the CBT were those who emerged successful in the just concluded credentials and physical screening exercise held nationwide. According to him, the 171,956 candidates for the aptitude test are applicants for general duty positions. Ani disclosed that 43,778 other applicants who were successful from the specialist cadet during the screening exercise would go through practical tests at a date to be announced later. He said Kaduna State will be presenting the highest number of candidates for the test with 12,343, followed by Bauchi with 10,911, while Anambra has the least candidates for the aptitude test with 343 applicants, followed by Lagos with 504 and Eboin with 600. And the Borno State Government says it will deliver its overall objectives, which is ensuring food security, completion of projects, and economic development. The Commissioner of Budget and Planning stated this during its breakdown of the 385 0.7 billion naira budget at a press briefing in Meiduguri. The Commissioner of Budget and Planning, Dr. Babagana Malambi, says the document will consolidate on the 74% achieved performance of the 2023 budgets, saying the fiscal year 2024 will focus on climate change mitigation, human capital development, provide quality health, education, and resettlement of displaced persons back to their ancestral homes. Colombe urged all ministries, departments and agencies to avoid spending out of their budgetary provisions. To partner with private sector to drive the agricultural innovation and create a better and more enabling environment for farmers in the state. Establishment of a specialized hospital and schools of nursing in the three senatorial district, as Excellency mentioned about dental hospital or at Freddy Hospital and others spread across the three senatorial districts. Also, he mentioned that there will be construction of ICT centers, government lodges, teachers and health workers' quarters. The leadership of the Joint Union of Plateau State-owned tertiary institutions is calling on Governor Caleb Mufwang to revisit his decision of sacking the state-owned institutions' heads and the newly employed workers. The Joint Union made this call during a press briefing at the NUJ Secretariat in just the Plateau State. So Nasir Saidu has the report. These are leadership of the Joint Union of Plateau State on Tertiary Institutions in a press briefing to journalists regarding the recent development in the state owned institutions. We recall that the chief executives of the state owned tertiary institutions were relieved of their appointments, and the recruitment carried out in October 2022 was also cancelled. The issue of employment was a product of agreement reached with government leading to the recruitment of staff in October 2022. This was to bridge the gap in manpower of the tertiary institution. But in June 2023, the newly employed staff were suspended by the government. And we acknowledge the intention of government to verify and review the entire process. And a committee was eventually constituted to review the process. And we equally applauded the government. The, the effort of the government to sanitize the recruitment exercise. The press should know that the committee and the government assure us that those staffs, it is only a review to sanitize and not to cancel the employment. The John Union appeals to the Plateau State Government to revisit their decision. We demand that government should revisit its action for the sake of industrial knowing very well that they are all plateau citizens 
we are appealing to the members of the public and well-meaning people, the plateau people, to please intervene for this newly employed staff to be reinstated for benefit of the students, the system, and the progress of our dear state. By this briefing, the joint union prayed that the Plateau State Government will respond to their appeals in a positive way for the progress of Plateau State tertiary institutions. Nasru Seydou, Viva TV News, Jos. And you're still watching News Live on Viewer Television. Business, international and entertainment news comes to you right after the break. Do stay tuned. Many thanks for staying with us now on Business News tonight. The Debt Management Office says the federal government is seeking to raise 2.5 trillion naira in its second bond auction of the year. The DMO in a circular stated that the offerings consisted of 1.25 trillion naira with a maturity date of February of 2031 and another 1.25 trillion naira with a maturity date of February 2034. The federal government is raising the money through the FG and savings bonds, which are part of the domestic borrowing plan. It stated that the auction date is February 19th of 2024, while the settlement date is February 21st of 2024. Uh, last year, the federal government raised about 7.06 trillion naira from the fixed income market. This year, the federal government has projected its new borrowings to hit 7.83 trillion naira. The real estate sector in Nigeria is forecast to grow to $2.26 trillion in 2024, of which residential estate will contribute $1.93 trillion, or 85.4%. Analysts who made the forecast noted that the growth will be happening at the backdrop of challenges of weakening currency, poor infrastructure, multiple taxation, high construction costs, amongst others, confronting the sector. Uh, speaking at the Real Estate Outlook 2024 launch organized by Nigerian British Chamber of Commerce in partnership with an international real estate federation, IFIABCI, founder and chief consultant, B. Adedikwe and Associates Limited, Dr. Biodun Adedikwe, who outlined the challenges, also noted that the sector will grow at compound annual growth rates of 7.52% to 3.023 trillion dollars between 2024 and 2028. Adedikwe reveals that Nigeria's 22 million unit housing deficit, mostly in urban areas, was home to about 51.7% of the population, adding the country's population estimated at 200 and 23.8 million is growing at 2.44% annually. And the Dangote Petroleum Refinery has issued tenders to sell two fuel cargoes for export. The first from the newly commissioned refinery. Nigerians have been eagerly looking forward to the release of products from the $20 billion Dangote Refinery after it was inaugurated in May last year by former President Muhammadu Buhari. Recorded on February 8, 2024, and indications emerged that lingering regulatory approvals had stalled Dangote Petrochemical Refinery's plan to release aviation fuel jet A1 and diesel for sale in the Nigerian market in January. A report had stated that one week after the January 31st timeline set by the management of Africa's largest refinery to begin sale of its petroleum product in the local market, the refinery was still battling to cross the hurdles of the several layers of regulatory approvals. 
And Nigeria's crude oil production marginally dropped to 1.42 million barrels a day in January of 2024, according to organizations of petroleum exporting countries, OPEC. And OPEC's monthly oil report for February 2024 showed that the country's oil output dipped by 3,000 barrels per day, or 0.21%, from 1,422 million barrels per day it produced in December, according to secondary sources. Sources. The federal government projected a 1.78 million barrels per day in the 2024 budget. However, the report said the nation's oil production rose from 1.33 million barrels per day to 1.42 million barrels per day, based on data obtained through direct communication. In the 2024 budget, President Bola Tinubu had proposed that the nation will strive to produce above what it currently produces as crude oil. The 28.7 trillion naira budget depends heavily on crude oil proceeds, which is the major revenue of the Nigerian government. Moment. And now on the international scene, the Indonesian Defense Minister Prabowo Subianto looks set to become the new president of the world's third largest democracy, likely avoiding a run of vote against elections rivals who have yet to concede. The ex-general was declared victorious after a preliminary count from government-approved pollsters previously shown to be reliable indicated the will win high office with a majority in his third attempt. The slower official count by the Archipelago's Election Commission also showed the 72-year-old on course for the presidency at 57%, with 43.82% of votes counted, more than double his nearest rival. President Joko Widodo says he had met with Pro Bowo the previous evening to offer his congratulations in reaction to Pro Bowo's victory. Markets in Southeast Asia's biggest economy jumped by nearly 2%, energized by Pro Bowo's vows to continuity. Hey. Berada di fiat-fiat paslon lain menunjukkan angka-angka yang memang paslon Prabowo Gibran menang sekali putaran. And elsewhere in India, the police have blocked roads leading to New Delhi as farmers march towards the capital to press for increased government support. Government ministers were preparing to meet union leaders on Monday to discuss their demands for better crop prices, which were promised three years ago amid protests aimed at forcing the repeal of laws designed to deregulate vast agricultural markets. Roadblocks were set up in a bid to avoid a repeat of the protests in 2021, when thousands of farmers camped out on major highways leading to the country's capital. The Farmers' March comes just months before national elections in India, in which Prime Minister Narendra Modi is widely expected to win a third term. The country's millions of farmers form an influential voting bloc and ruling parties try to keep growers on their side. And Australia has urged Israel against carrying out an unjustifiable military attack in Rafah, the southernmost Gaza, where 1.5 million displaced Palestinians have taken refuge. Australia's statement comes amidst calls by several countries, including the United States and France, urging Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to refrain from his planned ground offensive in Rafah, announced on Sunday. Australia, along with Canada and New Zealand, issued a joint statement calling for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire and the release of Israeli hostages held captive by Hamas. According to the Gazan Health Ministry, controlled by Hamas, over 28,000
1,500 Palestinians, mostly women and children, have been killed and over 68,000 injured, and more than 80% of the 2.3 million population of Gaza are internally displaced since the war began on October 7th. In densely populated mm. areas, risks extensive civilian casualties. Australia believes this would be unjustifiable. Our message to Israel is listen to the world, do not go down this path. Thank you. And now on Entertainment News Africa Movie Academy Awards, Armour has started accepting submissions for its 20th year of showcasing and celebrating achievements in the African film industry. The designated CEO of the AFA board, Raymond Anyam Osigwe, in a press statement that this year's edition will celebrate the late founder, Peace Anyam Osigwe, and also the contributions the Academy has made to the African film industry since its inception. Anya Mosigwe also shared that the 20th edition of Amar is going to be big. He further reiterated that Lagos is the host state and the governor, Babajidi Samolu, will return as the host for the 20th edition of the Amars. The organizers has announced the official call for submissions, which invites filmmakers to submit their feature-length short films, animation, and documentary work for consideration in the nearly 30 film categories of the awards. Shraibu Husseini, the current DG of the Nigerian Film and Video Censor Board, who has returned as the head of Amars college of screeners for the 20th edition has emphasized the importance of submissions that showcase africans and people of african descent <coughs> a nigerian singer divine ikubo also known as remer has been confirmed as a performer at this year's edition of the highest profile music awards ceremony in the united kingdom the brit awards the organizers announced this on their social media page on Thursday morning. The singer will be performing at the Brits 2024, and Rama will become the second Nigerian artist to perform at the Brit Awards. Recorded Bonoboy performed at the awards ceremony in 2018, and Bonoboy and Ashake were nominated in the Star Studded International Artist of the Year category, while Rama's Calm Down was nominated in the Highly Coveted International Song of the Year category at the 2024 Brit Awards. The award ceremony is scheduled to hold in London on March 2nd of 2024. As one of the songs of WizKid's fourth album, Made in Lagos, Essence, enjoyed massive international success that made it one of the Afrobeat's biggest exported songs. In another fit, Essence has now exceeded over 4 million units in sales in the United States, thus earning it an RIAA platinum plaque. And since its release in 2020, Essence, featuring Thames, has enjoyed commercial success, especially in the United States, where it peaked at number 9 on the Billboard. Hot 100 cutsy of the Justin Bieber remix. The single will also bring Thames international attention, which rocketed her into commercial success. After appearing on Essence, Thames became the first Nigerian female artist to debut a song on the Billboard Hot 100. The first Nigerian artist to debut at number one cutsy of Future's Wait for You, which also made her the first Nigerian female artist to win a Grammy. And that's all in News Live, but before we go, let's give you a quick recap of our headlines. Federal government has discontinued treason case against Omoyele Sore. And the Police Service Commission has shortlisted 171,956 applicants for computer-based tests. Plus, Indonesia's Prabowo Subianto is set to sweep the presidential win. And many thanks for watching. I am Chinon Suchekwas. Please do stay tuned and enjoy the rest of our programs. Have a good night.